What did Elijah mean when he said, did not my heart go uh, when confronting Gehazi? This is in 2 Kings. This is when Gehazi did something. He decided to, you know, it's time for me to go get um, male. Well, actually, he didn't go out and get man servants and male, female servants and so forth. But he wanted some, some, some money for what the man of God did. This is where Naaman comes to Elijah because the king of Syria sent him there. Uh, and says, because his servant girl said that uh, if only my master knew that there was a prophet in Israel, I mean, there was someone there speaking on behalf of God. And the point of saying that was, and by the way, the point of pointing out that there was a prophet in Israel is the point that there was a God of Israel. That was her point, And that's what the point, that's what the statement means. And so he goes to him and he gets dipped or he dips himself seven times in the river. And he says, we should, we should have the man wanted to pay him and he didn't want to accept any payment. And so Gehazi was like, wait, wait a second, we should get something. I mean, my, my, my Lord. And the story goes this way. Gehazi makes a statement that Elijah doesn't make. Elisha, because people say, are you saying Elijah? I'm saying Elisha with the S-H. Elisha makes a statement and Gehazi makes a statement. And their statement is different. Their statements are different. Elisha says that, um, I will not get anything from this man as the Lord lives whom I serve. Gehazi says something similar also. He says, as the Lord lives, I will go after him and get something. Well, notice the difference in the two. I'm not going to put this, put the passage up because it'd be, we'd be here forever and I might want to preach this thing. The difference is one says the Lord, as, as the Lord lives, the other one says, as the Lord lives, Elisha, whom I serve. One invokes God's name. The other one is living by it. And that's a point. We have a lot of that happening nowadays. Don't we? we have a lot of people who will invoke God's name, but aren't covered by his name, aren't living by his name. This is what the Bible means by taking the Lord's name in vain. There are a lot of people who will take his name, but do so in vain. I'm a Christian. I've got a cross. Look at my bright, shiny cross. I've got the biggest Bible. I've got all the Bible apps. I've got Logos. I've got Accordance. I've got every sort of Bible software there is. All of that but you're not actually a believer. And so this is what this is what the problem was with Gehazi. Now, maybe he was a believer, uh, and I think that he ended up becoming a believer if he wasn't at the time, but Gehazi goes out. Now, he makes a plan. He devises a plan. He lies. He lies on himself and lies on the Lord and goes and steal. And uh, Elisha says, is it time for us to get male servants and maid servants and gold and silver and all the different things. And all he did was go out and steal just a little bit because maybe when you do one little thing, somebody can look and see you're headed down a bigger path. Today, it's gold. Tomorrow, it's silver. Tomorrow, it's gold, silver, and clothes. The next day, it's this, it's that. People can see you starting here, but in five years, 10 years, they see you in jail. They see you in prison or they see you in the hospital or they see you dead. And so what happens is because he is a man of God, he says, did not my heart go? I knew you. I knew what you were going to do. Well, I know you. So this statement, did not my heart go with you? It can be taken two ways. One, that he knows Gehazi so well. I mean, remember, this is his servant. This They're, they're with each other all the time. He has seen all these different miracles that has happened with him. And so Elijah's also seen him. They are together all of the time. This is, this is if there's any other servant there, we don't know because this is the one that he talks about. And so because of his greed and his sin, He's punished, but then he ends up getting restored because he passed a test. Every last one of you guys, and I'm sorry, I have to go ahead and just preach this thing. I am so sorry, but every last one of you guys are in a test. If you don't know that by now, let me tell you, let me help you out. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, boys and girls of all ages, you are in a test. I don't know how old you are, but you're old enough to have gone through school. You may even be in school. And while you're in school, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to be given some information. While you're given that information, uh, the teacher that's given that information to you expects you to retain that information and to be able to use that information at the appropriate time. When the appropriate time comes up, we call that a test. When the test is given, the teacher is going to be silent, just like in life. Tests show up and you might wonder why. God, you seem pretty silent. Why? Because it might be a test. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Nope. It's not time to ask for the answers now. You should have been asking for the answers or asking questions when the, the information was given out. But because you did not want to heed it at that point in time, 
we're going to see if you're ready for the test. And it would behoove you to be ready for the test because once the test is given, you are going to be graded and there's going to be repercussions. You either will pass the test and go to the next level, be advanced, or you will flunk and there might be consequences. The problem is, though, you don't know when the retest is going to happen. There will be a retest. The problem is the retest might not be for another week. It might not be for another year. It might not be for another decade. You never know. You will take it. However, God has plenty of time to retake, re-give you the test or give you the test again, but it might be frustrating. You'd have to wait through that. So it behoove you to pay attention, to study, and be prepared to take the test. Amen.